The Houston Rockets went all in this past summer and it's paying off big time. Fresh off a win against Jokic and the defending champs, the Rockets responded to their 0-3 start with a 6 game winning streak which has them 4th in the West currently. While I am a Dylan Brooks advocate, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a bit skeptical of the Rockets spending this offseason. But the culture shift is here and Ime Udoka and the new look Rockets look like a force to be reckoned with. While Houston has looked great as of late, the most shocking part to me is how much better they still could be. If Houston can pull out wins with a generally disappointing start from Jalen Green, they could be a real problem when firing on all cylinders. The Rockets have a great blend of veteran leadership and young potential and are in position to become a contender quicker than people thought. Today I will be evaluating Houston's current run and how they will look for the rest of this season and beyond. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. It would help me out a ton. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. While the Rockets run right now is the result of many different pieces coming together, I'm going to start with the guys Houston brought in to try and shift the franchise, Ime Udoka, Fred Van Vliet, and Dylan Brooks. Fred Van Vliet was a signing that I honestly didn't love but understood. With new CBA rules, Houston had to spend the money and Fred has been the veteran floor general that they wanted. While yes, the $40 million price tag is obviously large, again Houston had to spend the money and Fred has been a good contributor so far. While I would honestly like to see more from Fred scoring wise, he is shooting near 37% from deep and is playmaking well. I don't really think it's possible for Fred to live up to his contract and while I'd like a little more from him, something's clearly working. The Rockets' other major free agent signing this offseason was Dylan Brooks, and I love the way that he's playing right now. While he did have a bad playoff run, I will still never understand how people somehow thought that Dylan Brooks would be a minimum player. It was an obvious situation of who knows what's going on and who doesn't, but Brooks is playing like the perfect glue guy Houston wanted him to be. Brooks is putting up a hyper-efficient 14-4-2, shooting 55% from the field and 53% from deep. Anyone who knows basketball knew that Brooks was a starting level guy, and while his scoring isn't where it has been, he is playing his role to absolute perfection. The most impactful big addition for Houston this season is Ime Udoka. He will definitely be in Coach of the Year conversations, and deservingly so. While we knew this Houston roster had talent, prior to this offseason their core was all 21 and younger. Ime has figured out how to put all of the pieces of the puzzle together, and it's showing. While I'm definitely going to discuss the Houston Young core in a moment, how Houston is doing this with Jalen Green not playing to his abilities only emphasizes Ime's impact. The Rockets winning period was a rarity last season, let alone beating the defending champs with your best player shooting 1 for 13. While the Rockets big moves are a huge factor in this sudden shift, the development of their young core cannot be discounted. Alperin Sengun is playing out of his mind, Jabari Smith is figuring it out, and when JG's shot starts falling I think it'll get really scary. Alperin Sengun has been the Rockets' best player so far this season. He is leading the Rockets in scoring and rebounding and is second to only Fred Van Vliet in assists. Sengun is currently averaging an efficient 19-8-6. While I am a big proponent of rim protecting bigs, Sengun's value should not be ignored and I think there is a good path forward with Sengun should he continue developing. If Jabari Smith can turn on the defender people think he can, I think the Rockets will be able to survive and thrive with Sengun down low. Defenders like Dylan Brooks and Fred Van Vliet also help immensely when you don't have a rim protecting five. Jalen Green is an interesting player. While he is undoubtedly talented, I wasn't sure, and still am to an extent, of what he could become. I see why some people see superstar potential, but I also understand why people think his limitations may be too big for him to get to that top 5-10 to 10 level. With the amount of mouths to feed in Houston, I don't know if he ever reaches the statistical heights some may have seen for him, but he should be a very quality player. Jalen started to get it together in the three games prior to the Denver one, scoring 23, 28, and 25 on overall good efficiency. I don't think his overall slow start should be very alarming to anyone, but I think maybe our expectations should be brought down a bit due to the amount of people who need shots and the amount of people who frequently handle the ball in Houston. I'm not going to act like I was the highest on green, but he should definitely be an all-star level guy, and I think he's just adjusting to not only a new system coach and roster, but really a new way of playing basketball that he hasn't experienced in his NBA career to this point. As for the remainder of this roster, I discussed this part of the roster much more in my first video about the Rockets, which I dropped right after the draft, but I'll give you all the rundown. I loved Houston's draft. While I honestly didn't know much about Eamon Thompson, getting Cam Whitmore at 20 is what made me really love that class. While I didn't think anyone was really freaking out, if you were, Cam going to the G League is just an opportunity and reps thing. 
With the amount of guys who need shots in Houston at the moment, finding a place for him to fit in is complicated. It's obviously way too early for judgment on either Eamon or Cam, but I do like Houston's young core and their previous draft. Just for the record, I think Jabari Smith and Tari Eason will be good as well. Just getting a gauge on everyone after nine games, especially with Tari only playing a few, is a bit hard. Again, with the amount of mouths to feed and stuff and ball handlers, you know, Sangoon, you know, with him handling the ball, Jalen Green, Fred, I don't know if Jabari Smith will ever be able to get to that, you know, like superstar number one overall pick potential that some people saw for him, but I think he could be an outstanding, outstanding, outstanding role player, and I know you say role player and people start freaking out. A role player can be a really good starter. A role player does not have to be a bench guy. You can be an outside, again, if he can be, you know, the defender people think he can be, cover up for Sangoon on that end somewhat, and be a knock down three-point shooter I think he will be an outstanding contributor who will get paid again he'll get paid 20 to 25 million a year on his next contract if he can even just do that again he does have more potential for other things but with the way the roster is right now it's kind of hard to get a gauge on you know how well one how much opportunity is he going to have how much opportunity you know like again like right like, like there's a lot of stuff at play here but for all things considered I think that the last couple draft classes for Houston should be absolutely fine really the last three in all honesty I mean you know the Ty Ty Washington Usman Garuba situation is a bit unfortunate but you know obviously not really impacting Houston really whatsoever the final aspect of this Houston roster is their veterans holding it together Jeff Green Jock Landell Aaron Holiday and Reggie Bullock should all be solid contributors old man Jeff Green is continuing to prove he can still be a solid piece and was a huge part of that win over Denver while none of these guys are wowing they should all be playable rotation pieces to wrap this up, I am really intrigued by the overall Houston situation. There is a very interesting blend of young talent and potential and veteran leadership. Figuring out who goes where is a process, but I think Houston's biggest problem will be having too much young talent, and that's a great problem to have. While I don't know if currently constructed Houston is a future championship contender, they have a plethora of young pieces and draft capital to move with. I think this Rockets team should be competing for a playoff spot this year and titles down the line, but only time will tell if Stone and the Rockets play their cards right. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, hit that noti bell. I would really, really appreciate it. Comment down below. Uh, I don't know. Comment fan. Uh, I'm looking at a fan right now. If you're still watching right now, if you're still watching right now, I rock with you. And if you're still watching right now, if you're scrolling down to comment and you're not sub for some reason, just hit the sub button, man. But uh, yeah, once again, that's going to wrap this one up. Again, comment your thoughts on the Houston Rockets down below. You know, what you think about, you know, I mean, Jalen Green, you know, the whole fit, the, the amount of mouths to feed. Like, it's a really, really interesting situation to me. And I think, again, right, like they have, they you know the Rockets have a ton a ton of breathing room to the point where they can mess some things up and still be really really good down the line but hey man only time will tell but that's really gonna wrap this one up and I'm out peace